What's going on guys? Fun fact that very much has to do with the overall purpose of this video. Most of your engine wear is going to happen on a cold start whenever you're waiting on your engine oil to warm up so that it can lubricate better. That's an unfortunate thing that we have to live with, with gasoline engines that use oil to lubricate them, is we have to wait on that oil to go up to its normal operating temperature. It still works when it's cold. That's why they recommend you changing your oil if you live in a colder climate or a warmer climate. There are different types of oils that you can use, but even if you do all of that stuff right and you use the right kind of oil, you change your oil at the recommended intervals, and you sit and wait before you drive off when you, when you start the engine on a cold start, even if you do all that stuff right, you're still going to see engine wear over the lifespan of the engine. It's just, just how it is. But if you want to minimize a little bit how much wear you're, you're getting on your engine, you can speed up how, how quickly the oil warms up by installing what I'm going to install today. These parts that I'm going to be upgrading today came on the Tacoma with the same engine as the 2007 and 2009 FJ Cruiser, which is the 2005 to 2015 Tacoma. It's the same casting, it's the same part that would go on the FJ Cruiser in that location, but they never came on the FJ Cruisers because the FJ Cruisers never came with a tow package. The Tacomas that have the tow package, they have these extra two ports here for coolant out and coolant in. And you can see on the casting for the FJ Cruiser, there's a spot where it would have been had our engines come with the tow package there. And then there's another one down there under the thermostat housing that you can't see because this is where the thermostat housing sits. And there's where the other one is. You can drill them out if you want to and tap it, but that part was 30 something dollars on, on eBay. The more expensive part was this one, the sandwich plate that goes on underneath the oil filter. And you can see there this little knob that sticks out on the side of the, the oil filter um, holder is in the perfect place for this to sit. So that sits on the knob and then these face in the direction that they're supposed to because this is the same engine. Installing these oil cooler parts, it does two things. It brings the oil up to the operating temperature faster and it will also help keep your oil cool if you're doing something like towing a, a trailer or a boat or whatever up the side of a mountain, which I don't know why you would tow a boat up a side of a mountain, but you get what I'm saying. If you're towing something uphill, you run the risk of your oil getting too hot and getting outside of its lubrication properties and also possibly your engine running too hot and, and, uh, and overheating. So if that is the case and you're doing a lot of towing that I would highly recommend uh, watching the videos on installing one of these. This is an all aluminum radiator made by CSF and I've got a video on installing it. The installation is pretty straightforward and then I replaced the plastic here. I replaced my old thermostat housing with one of these. This is actually an aftermarket part for a, uh, for a Honda K engine. I ground down the edges of and I drilled new holes in and I pretty much made it fit and I, I would recommend replacing those parts if you're doing a lot of towing because you you lessen your risk of catastrophic engine damage by replacing plastic parts with aluminum, but also increasing your coolant capacity by putting in a better radiator. Also speaking of tow package upgrades, I have the higher output alternator that's also from the same Tacoma, 2005 to 2015, and I'll have that video popping up if you wanted to check that out. So I'm gonna set up my tripod and I'm going to start the installation of this, uh, but it looks like a pretty straightforward install, just walking you through what I'm going to be doing. Uh, removing all of the hose clamps, obviously, so I pliers here and then this thermostat housing I don't have to remove. It looks like I can still get to that 10 millimeter bolt there, even though I have my little aluminum thermostat housing in the way. I think on the factory setup it was, I think I had even more room to get to that bolt before I put this fat thing in. Because there's two hose clamps there and there. And there's one hose clamp that looks, it's a little hard to get to and I, I can't see it. There's no way I could video it. My camera died, I didn't realize that until after the fact, so I'm inserting this footage after everything is done. But basically, there are five bolts that hold this in. That was the part that I talked about next in the video. Then the five bolts are all easy to get to, but most of them are hard to see. So this one you can't see uh, very easily at all. You can remove the thermostat housing if you want to, but you don't have to. You can still get to this without removing the thermostat housing. This one, it's even harder to see. This is, it's underneath. This is, I'm looking at this as if I am looking from the radiator. So this is the top of the vehicle. This is the bottom of the vehicle. The water inlet coming from the lower side of your radiator. And then this is the water outlet coming from the upper side of the radiator. This is hard to see, but it's still fairly easy to get to. Uh, this you could see, I think, 
fairly well uh, from looking in the engine bay. This one you can't see, and then this one you can't see either. But there are the five bolts that hold it on, and on the back side there's no Permatex uh, or any kind of gasket sealant holding this on. There's an O-ring that sits inside the engine that seals against here. So this surface, this is how the surface area looked whenever I pulled it off of the engine. I didn't clean anything. And there's an O-ring that sits around a, uh, a metal pipe that slides in here and these edges are tapered so it allows you to slide in pretty easily. The o-ring that I used here was a 1 and 3 8 diameter and this one I couldn't find a Toyota part number for but there's a Felpro one that works. I'm leaving this hose facing up because if I tilt it down then it's just going to drain a lot of the coolant that's in the radiator and I want to keep coolant in the radiator. Take a 10 millimeter wrench to loosen the, the bolts here, here, and here for the thermostat housing. I have three bolts, but I have three bolts because I changed this out. And if you're just loosening up here, here, and here, then it's, they're just studs and they're easier to get to than what I've done. I have a little swivel and I, I, this, is, this makes it a little bit easier to get in the, uh, the quarter inch, the quarter inch adapters. And I'm only loosening these up because it's easier to get these loosened up while they're on the engine than it would be whenever this housing is taken off. And before I loosen anything else, I actually should take these hose clamps off. It's going to be more difficult to remove the hose clamps if this housing is off completely. So I'm going to remove the hose clamps and the hoses and everything before this housing comes off, with the exception of the back one that I can't get to that's, that's back there. And if you want to take this throttle body connector off, you can. I would advise against it because of how brittle the, the plastic gets on, on Toyotas after about 15 years. So I'm going to leave this on and work around it. The hose clamps for the send and return that go to the throttle body are both loose. I just put a flathead screwdriver under it and slid it up. And this little hose clamp is loose that goes on here. That's off. The one on the back side of the water inlet, I have no choice but to remove that hose and hose clamp after this is all loosened up. So I'm gonna take all the other ones off first. And the last one that's a little hard to get to is the one that's down closest to the fan. Those are loose. Now I'm gonna work on taking off these 10 millimeter bolts that are the five of them that hold in the water inlet. There's the bottom one here that's underneath this the coolant outlet. And these are pretty easy to get to with uh, just a shallow 10 millimeter socket and a three inch extension. And since I've already loosened this thermostat housing, I'm just going to take it off completely. If you drop a 10 millimeter bolt, make sure it doesn't go inside that idler pulley because that's not going to be fun to get out. And there's my thermostat housing, the aftermarket part for the Honda K engine. And then this is just a pressure sensor and a coolant sensor that I have monitoring the, uh, the coolant pressure and coolant temperature. This is where the, uh, the three inch extension doesn't fit. It actually hits the fan. That one is loose on the bottom. The last one is directly beneath this. I'm going to attempt to use some needle nose to move this little hose clip back. It's a little difficult, but it is kind of doable. I managed to move it slightly. It does look like the easiest way to get to that little hose on the back side of this water inlet is to take the throttle body off. So that would be the easiest way. I'm still going to try to keep working with this to get the hose off without trying to take the throttle body off. But it's doable. I just pop the hose off just like that with a screwdriver sticking down. This screwdriver is about six inches underneath the handle. So that's off and now this should just slide right out. It feels like something else is holding it and I know there's an O-ring around a pipe back there. So it's, that seems to be what's holding this in still. Okay, it is very difficult to get it off of that, that O-ring, but it's doable and it's fairly easy to slide in 
through the side, just like so. So here it is, folks. Here it is. I'm gonna compare these side by side. Okay, so here's the bottom. You have the inlet, the outlet. I removed the studs on mine because I have that different thermostat housing installed. Everything is pretty much the same looking at these, comparing these two side by side. I've got to clean up the inside of this one. It looks like it's been sitting for a little while. It's got some buildup on that surface area there. So I'll just take some four out steel wool. So one of these O-rings that you have to replace, the surface area sits there and it's down here behind where the thermostat housing was. This is and this O-ring here that's around the pipe needs to be changed out. So here's this O-ring. This was the one that is the upper O-ring that goes around that, that tube. And this is the lower one. That's a little bit of a thinner diameter. Toyota doesn't mention in their factory service manual what size these actually are. So I'm gonna go get two O-rings and then I will uh, put this back together. Okay, back from the auto parts store, I got my O-rings. This one is a Felpro 35809. You wanted to order this. And my O-rings, the closest one I could find. So this is the factory one. And these are two that I picked up. This one's slightly smaller and slightly fatter. And this one is about the same size. So the 32 millimeter O-ring ended up being a little large and the other one that was one and three eighths diameter. So that one ended up, uh, had to stretch it very slightly, but it's a nice snug fit. So as long as I wet it, whenever I slide on this, the new water inlet, I should be good. I'm gonna back these studs off really quickly before I go and put this on. But uh, anyone else, unless you have this installed on your FJ Cruiser and you followed my last video, you don't need to take these studs out. Just use the studs as they are. If you installed this, then yes, you want to take your studs out. I'm going to put that in. That just goes down here. Fits perfectly. And the other one, there were actually, uh, I picked up two O-rings. I picked one that was slightly larger. This is a 32 millimeter by three millimeter O-ring. So I'm going to try to put this one on because it's the closest to the factory one. Oh, and that one goes on, but it's loose. So I don't like that. So this one I think is one and three eighths diameter. Yeah, so that one, that one fits really smoothly actually. So that's a one and three eighths diameter. Um, I don't know what that is metric, but uh, one and three eighths diameter fits really well. And just to keep it from binding whenever it goes on, I'm gonna get some of this coolant from down there in the in the block and put it on so that it slides in well. This is a tapered lip on the inside, so it should slide on and then get tighter as you push it. So don't worry about if you're putting it on and it's it's not going on all the way, just kind of try to, to move it back and forth and slide it back into place. But I'm gonna put some coolant on the inside of this too, just so that it's just so that it's even more slippery. And this I don't have to worry about too much because it's just a flat. Just a flat area. That O-ring just sits in a groove down there. If I want to make this easier on myself, then as I'm putting it on, this hose that was on top that I had to slide off with a screwdriver, I'm just going to see if I can wiggle that in place. That was easy enough, it's on all the way. If your hand is about my size, you can get it down between the intake manifold and the air box here. So you can get that hose back on without having to take all of this stuff off. Now the tricky part is just going to be getting that, that hose clamp back on. Now what I would do, I would check to make sure that O-ring didn't slide out off of, its, off of its groove whenever you put this housing back on. Has, that would uh, be a very serious leak very quickly. So check that O-ring and then while you're sliding it on, make sure you don't, the, the water inlet down here on the bottom, because the water outlet is the one on top. So the water inlet that's on the bottom, make sure you don't move that out of its groove whenever you're sliding on the, uh, the housing. Now what I didn't do is I didn't get four hose clamps to go on the new hoses. So I'm putting on two new hoses that weren't originally on this vehicle. And the big oversight that I had was not buying four hose clamps that will slide on. For now, I'm probably going to pull them off of the IS300 and then just replace them later because that engine's gonna come out anyway. I was able to use my long needle nose, uh, the needle nose vice grips to get that 
rear hose clamp back on. The book doesn't say to tighten them sequentially, but I'm going back and forth on these upper two bolts that, uh, that straddle that O-ring. So I tightened this one a little bit, tightened that one all the way down, and then I went back to the one on the right and tightened it, just so that it pulls the housing around the O-ring evenly. Now this is in no way any kind of torque wrench. So the book says this takes 80 inch pounds. This is 80 inch pounds, so I'm gonna set it to that. And they're all torqued down. And for putting the factory thermostat housing back on, it is also 80 inch pounds. So just follow the same uh, torque specs for tightening these down. So this is a little bit different than expected. I expected it to have a 30 millimeter nut on the outside but it actually looks like it takes a 12 millimeter uh, Allen key, which I don't have. I had to go buy a 12 millimeter hex socket. So I uh, didn't have anything above 10 and now I do. So Okay, so that's that. And that will be replaced by this. This end goes down, obviously after this is in. And this is a 30 millimeter socket, as I said earlier. I've got that nice and tight. Now I know a lot of you are gonna yell at me for this. I'm changing my oil in like a few hundred miles. I'm not ready to do that yet. So I'm putting this filter back on, re-wetting the seal, obviously, so that it slips and doesn't grab on something. So this one that's shaped like the, uh, I don't know, the stretched out U, this one goes on top. And then this other one, that's the crazy shape. So this one goes on the bottom. These I just pulled off the IS300 that I'm gonna rebuild the engine on anyway. Oh, and if you look at this hose, this one does, goes more straight and this is curved. The curved side goes on the side of the oil filter. And this one, the, this bend, the yellow side on this hose, if you get the Toyota hose, that goes on the bottom and then the part with the 45 degree bend goes up here. All right, so the new part is in, that's all good. Let me snap in my coolant pressure, coolant temperature sensor connectors. Putting the thermostat housing in is a little bit difficult. If for whatever reason you put in this billet thermostat housing like I did, it's even harder to get in because you have hoses to work around and the, uh, the lower radiator hose is like that close to the lower oil cooler uh, hose. It's actually, I think it's touching it. It's, it's that close. So it's not going to matter if you're using the factory thermostat housing because the factory thermostat housing is, I think about an inch longer than the one that I'm using. So it's farther away from that hose that this hose would be touching. So they wouldn't even come close to each other because the thermostat housing is longer than this one. All right, so it's running, it's done. It really only took about an hour, hour and a half to do everything. Everything's good, no leaks. And let me turn it off so I can talk a little bit easier. So I just finished bringing it up to operating temperature. The hoses are tight, everything's good. Um, I ran it for a little bit with the radiator cap off so that I could get all the bubbles out and then I closed the radiator cap. It took about a gallon and a half of uh, of coolant going into the going into the radiator because I one I have a, a pretty large radiator it has more coolant capacity than the stock one did so expect to probably put another gallon in uh, between the radiator and what's lost from the engine there's no oil leaks around the filter I don't see any oil down there didn't have to go back to the auto parts store for clamps because I just robbed the ones from the uh, from the car that I'll be rebuilding the engine in so now I'll have oil that warms up a little bit faster than it did before. So I don't really have to worry about that as much. Not that it was a huge concern before. So if I want to tow a trailer uphill for a ways, I don't have to worry about the engine running too hot, the oil getting too hot, losing its viscosity, all of that. That's it for this video. It was, it took me all day to make this. So please um, leave 
likes and comment below and make sure it was worth my while to put this video up because I, it literally took 10 hours to make this video. So thanks a lot for watching and God bless you guys.